G'day everyone and welcome back to the Warthog Project. For those who have never seen it before, this is my homemade A10C Warthog flight simulator. Uh, triple projector setup, 270 degree curve, and the whole thing was home built by me. If you have any questions, please check out the link in the description below um, to my website. You'll find all the files you can download yourself and a full build log of how I built it. All right, so today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Elec power panel, which is that one just there. You'll see that the backlighting is a different color. Everything else is Envy's green, except for that. That's because that panel right there is no longer a replica. It is a real aircraft panel that was flown in an A-10A. Uh, I got that off Facebook Marketplace for 50 euro, which was about 85 Australian dollars. Absolute bargain. It's got all the mil-spec switches in it, and the whole thing still works. Uh, what we'll do now is we will jump back in time through the power of editing. Uh, we'll head out onto the workbench, and I'll show you how I restored it, and how I got it working in the simulator. All right, so this is the real A10 Elect power panel. It's obviously seen better days, but it's a real flown part. You can see that all the switches work. They are genuine mil-spec switches, so I've got no doubt that once I connect them up and test them, they'll probably work. Um, I'm guessing there's going to be a manufacturing date. I can't actually make it out on these markings, but I think there'll probably be markings on the inside on the switches once I crack it open. Uh, I'm going to tear it down, clean up all these switches, replace these these are things you can see they're all rusted i've actually got a whole bunch of new ones that were sent to me for free by another awesome member of the flight sim community the viper simmer so i'll link to his um youtube channel he's got an f-16 cockpit using all real parts not like my fake ripoff ones uh, so what we'll do now is we'll try and open it up i'll probably start with removing these screws taking off the faceplate so i have not opened this thing up before so i'm going to be as surprised as you who knows maybe there'll be nothing inside it maybe it's all fake and i've been ripped off All right, so it is definitely LED backlightable. May 1978. That is fucking cool. Looks like there's a lot of damage at the back here, so I'm gonna be careful with that. This actually looks real simple. Let's uh, undo this here. Oh shit, that's broken. You can see it's cracking when I unscrew it. Just be real gentle with it. Oh, that's cracking. The plastic's all um, brittle, so unscrewing this without supporting it. It's causing it to crack. Oh, that's broken. That's well, it's really broken. All right, that one's snapped off. I'm probably not going to use this rear cover anyway, so I'm not... Oh, they're all cracked anyway, see? We'll just pull that off, I think. See if I can undo that one. came out without cracking wow that's in um it looks like it's in really good condition um, i'm not going to use any of this wiring and i'm not going to use this rear case for my cockpit so all i'm going to do is unscrew all of these keep this wiring loom completely uncut 1979 this plastic was made in 1978 this metal was made that's really cool. All right, and that's the connection right there for the LED backlight. All right, so the problem I'm gonna have with this LED backlight, if it even turns on, I don't know if it will, we'll try that in a second, is this metal frame in real aircraft is earthed obviously to the jet, and then both the backlighting circuit and all the switches are earthed at the same spot to the jet, you know what I mean? The problem with that is I can't do that because the Arduinos are earthed to this and I can't run the earth to the backlight to the Arduinos. So what I'll probably have to end up doing is drilling this out wider um, to separate that. Anyway, what I'm gonna do now is undo all these screws. Sorry about this, I just spilled some beer. Cheers. All right, so that is that completely done. Alexa, if I was born in May 1978, how old am I? Somebody born on May 1st, 1978 would be 44 years old today. So that's why the government pays so much money for these things. This is 44 years old 
and there is not a single bit of corrosion in it. A little bit of rust on the front, the bits that are showing, a little bit of dirt in there, some surface rust just there. Um, but it's pretty in it's pretty much in flying condition. Look, look at these wiring looms. Forty-four years old. The plastic's brittle, so the thing's broke, but that's it. You can't expect plastic to last that long. But anyway, uh, what I'll do now is I'll take some good photos. Um, I'll clean this up, and we will attach this to some power and see if the backlight works. Cross on the panel, that indicates, so people who are doing maintenance on it know where the power connector is. And then I think all of these white bits, there will be a LED mounted in there. That one there looks like it might be burnt out but I may have to drill these and see what's behind it. But anyway, we will do some experimenting now and I will see what I can do with it. All right, so we've set up our 12 volt power supply. Here's the moment of truth. I'm half not expecting this to work. I'm guessing it's gonna be negative on the outside, positive on the middle. Holy shit, it lit up. What? Gotta be careful I don't short this out. In fact, what I'll do is, um. I might quickly set up this connector so it press fits and then we'll see if it works. But I'm fucking excited. I just don't want to accidentally short it and kill all those LEDs. So I'll set up a proper connector and then we'll get it tested properly. Alright, so it's not exactly a proper connector, but I've just screwed in the positive to the positive bit so I don't accidentally stuff it up. Oh man, that is cool. That's on 12 volts too and it's really bright. Alexa, turn off the garage lights. Okay. Man, that's cool. I'm leaving it that colour. Not changing it to green. I'm keeping it like that. Even all the scratches and damage on it make it look awesome. Oh, I'm excited. Alright, so this is the panel that's sort of put back together and you can see the back lights on. Uh, after looking at it for a little bit, I think I am going to give it a coat of paint just to fix up all the light bleed that's obviously coming out of all the scratches and stuff in it. Um, I was going to leave it like that just to make it look worn, but I just think it looks probably a little bit too worn for the rest of the cockpit. So what I'll do is I will very carefully mask up all the text and then I'll just hit it with, an, with the airbrush with a coat of matte black and that should stop all this light bleed in all the little scratches and around the edges and then we'll get it in the cockpit all right so i'm just going to show you how i am restoring all these switches down here um there's one that i've already done this one here just needs to be cleaned so all i'm going to do first is take it out of the panel just with a spanner Forty-four years of muck in there. You can see the state of it right now. Um, all the washers come off. First thing I'll do is just hit it with the air compressor just to get all that gunk out of in there. Just got to do that away from here so this doesn't go flying everywhere. I'm just using Windex to clean it. No, I've got the car version of Windex, but it's the same thing. Um, and I'll just drown it. These switches are waterproof. I know I'm running a risk of it. It's lost its integrity over the years. However, I don't reckon it would have. Look at that. The rubber sil the silicon in there is still in one piece. Uh, so I'll just get in there with a... You can see all that gunk coming out, but it looks like it's nice and solid. Just clean it off with some Windex. Same thing with all the washers. And then I just hit it with a very tiny bit of this. This is... um actually meant for hair clippers it's a silicon lubricant that you know what i mean it's very very mild because it's meant to go on the human body so i just spray that to stop it from rusting it's just like a silicon protectant uh, i've had no dramas with it and then i just get it on the multimeter just to make sure that it's still working um i have no doubt it is these mil spec ones are very very reliable hence the reason they're in real aircraft uh, and then i'll get it back in the panel and i'll do that with all of them This, these couple of hammers are a little bit different. I've already cleaned up that one, and I'll now do the same to this. Uh, same sort of thing. You just unscrew that. 
and it drops off. So this one's commonly referred to as a cut the hammer. You can see there's a bit of corrosion around it and also surface rust on the inside here. So all I'm going to do is um, just use ordinary brasso to clean that up with a wire brush and one of these as well just to get in there and really give it a nice scrub. Uh, same thing, check it out on the multimeter, make sure it works, which I'm sure it will, and then bolt it back in there. And then I'll hit it with the same um, silicon lubricant right down in there. Uh, now what I'll do is work on this plate here. So we'll clean it up as best as I can. I think I'm just going to get right in there with um, sort of some Q-tips and clean out all the dirt. Uh, this is flaking, you can see. So I'll probably just hit that with an air duster and I won't, I'll sort of refrain from wetting it and cleaning it. All right, so you can see that I've masked up the text because I don't want the paint to hit any of that. Um, it's also going to protect it just when I give it a very, very light sand. I've just got some, um, I think it's about 600 grit and some 1000 grit. I'm just going to very lightly go over it. I'm not trying to get all the paint off or anything like that. I'm just trying to even out all of these bumps that are in it from where it's been touched up in the past um, as well as I can. And then I'll airbrush it. So I'm just going to get a real light coat and then I'll connect it up and see what it looks like and probably give it three or four coats until the light stops bleeding through. So now I'm just going to hit it with paint. All I'm using is um, normal sort of Tamiya model paint and my trusty airbrush. Uh, the reason I'm going to use this and not a spray can is because I can control precisely how much paint comes into it. Beauty about double action airbrushes is I can put heavier coats on the edges here and lighter coats over where the text is. I'll try and video it, but it's a bit awkward because it's a gravity fed airbrush. I have to sort of keep the airbrush up. I can't go like this because it will pour everywhere, but. See how it goes. All right, so I'd never usually do this on the way, on the bare workbench. I'd usually have um, a mat down, but these are the things I do to make it look cool for YouTube. Here's the connector that I removed from the panel and you can see that I've sort of dodged it up. I cut it with heat shrink so it doesn't arc out on the metal panel on that. Uh, and it just goes down to a 12 volt connector. It's actually really, really bright for 12 volts, which I'm happy with. And then it just pushes on like that. Uh, obviously it's really dim because the, the masking tape's still on the letters, but you can see obviously I need to get more paint in all these bits where the it's shining through. I should actually just leave the backlight on while I'm painting it, shouldn't I?
let that one dry and um, come back to it later. All right, one last coat on it just to even it all out. Done. All right, so I've left it for about 20 minutes to dry. Now we'll just slowly peel off the labels. All right, so you can see how I drilled that out so the um, connector doesn't short on the panel now. Uh, now all I need to do is get that on there. Where's the screws gone? Probably just need to paint these with a brush to be black. I'm intrigued by this panel. I'm not sure if it came from a actual aircraft or a simulator because I was under the impression that the aircraft was 24 volts for the backlighting, but this seems to be working perfectly on 12 volts. Connect this like that. Turn it on. Beautiful. Outstanding. I love the color. I love that it's not going to be Envy's green like the rest of the cockpit is, so it stands out. Uh, what I will probably do is use these real ones, because it's a real panel, why not? Uh, so I'll just airbrush these in black while I've got them out. And just a couple of drops of epoxy to hold them in place, and she'll be ready to go. I love it. All right, that's the new, or should I say the 44-year-old one. And there's my one that was in the cockpit. This one here is manufactured myself. This one here is the real thing. All right, so all up, I'm pretty sure I got the dimensions exact because I got the um, measurements off somebody who had a real one off the internet. Uh, you can see the only difference real net between looks of them is this one's going to have backlighting that is old school. This one's got the green Envis backlighting because it was my own wiring loom with LEDs in it. Um, this one was using cheap Chinese switches. This one's now using proper mil-spec ones. This one only had a normal toggle for the emergency flood. This one's now got a locking toggle and I was using an NKK locking toggle for the APU gen but it's the incorrect one because it locks in the off position too and the on position. But it was just what I had spare. And then that is a normal switch with a momentary at the bottom, but you can definitely feel the difference with a mil spec switch. Anyway, all I'm going to do is um, remove all, the, all this wiring, keep all the wiring the same so I shouldn't need to reprogram anything. This cable um, just goes to a plug that goes into one of the cards in the cockpit, so as long as I match all the switches up, when I bolt it all to this, um, I shouldn't need to change anything. I shouldn't need to do any reprogramming Helios or anything. It should just work straight out of the box. I'm still debating whether I might put a semi-gloss clear coat over the top of it to make it sort of match the semi-gloss rather than be a pure flat black. But anyway, construction's basically the same. My one's a lot thicker and it's three layers. This one's a thin metal backplate and one layer of plastic. And this is it all wired up. So I use the same loom that I just pulled off this one. It was soldered on this one, it's no longer soldered on this. Um, so I didn't have any crimp connectors left. All I ended up doing was just sort of putting it in between the washer and the screw and tighten it up. So it's not perfect, but it will certainly do the job for simulator use. Um, also, I didn't have to solder or change any of the switches around. The external dimensions are perfect because I found them online. However, the locations of the buttons I just made up myself. So it's a little bit off. This panel doesn't fit perfectly on that one, but what I'm going to do now is go and put the real panel in the jet, and we'll see how it looks. Alright, so here I'm sitting in the jet, you can see that it is installed and working. Uh, when I flick the console brightness, you'll see it changes with the rest of the cockpit as well. I didn't end up using the Dezus rails, I've just temporarily bolted it in using the same bolts that I've done everywhere else, and I'll just put the 3D printed covers over the top that make it look like a Dezus bolt. 
everything works obviously, the emergency flood, you gotta lift it up to get it to work now. That nice mil spec click now. Uh, you can see that if I turn off the inverter, warning lights, uh, APU gen, flashing, if I turn off both jennies, and obviously the emergency flood still overrides that. But if I flick both jennies on, I'll get power back. I love it. Emergency flood still bypasses. Flick those on. Well, that sort of brings us to the end of this video. Thanks heaps for watching. I'm pretty happy now I've got a real A10 part in here. Um, I love the mil spec switches and it was worth every cent. Like I said, only cost me 85 Australian dollars. The shipping was expensive, but yeah, we won't tell my wife how much it cost to ship it from Belgium. But it does the job. I love it. I love the mil spec switches. Thank <laughs> you.